Welcome back to Logic Basics. Today we're going to do some review on the square of opposition and we're also going to learn how to use the square of opposition to get statements to fit on the square to determine if they're true, false, or doubtful. Uh, I'm going to be switching between a lot of different handouts and my iPad today, so we're going to uh, multitask a little bit. I'm going to start with the iPad and uh, I want to just review a few of the rules we went over for the square of opposition. Let's just draw a square and I would encourage you to do this also in your notes and we're going to label the square A, E, I, and O. If you recall, A is here, E, I, and O. Now, each of these, uh, you know what, I'm going to get rid of this for a second so that you can see this. Uh. I'm going to take myself off the screen. Okay, A, E, I, and O. Um, recall that the A statement says all S is P. E says no S is P. I sum S is P. And O sum S is not P. Okay, everybody have that uh, as part of your review. And remember that when you have the all is, this is a universal affirmative statement. A universal affirmative. E is a universal negative. Okay. I is a particular affirmative. And O is a particular, what, negative. So I want to draw your attention to a few things here. The universals are on the top. And this relationship between the two top universals are called contraries. If you recall the rule from contraries, which is on the handout called Judgments. Contraries, both may be false, both cannot be true. So if one is true, the other is false. I'll draw your attention to this diagonal. This is contradiction. Okay, contradiction here. And I'm gonna abbreviate CTD for contradiction here. If you remember, a contradiction differs in quantity all or some, and quantity is or is not. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can see that on the other side too. The no is a universal negative, and we have some, and it's affirming some is. Okay, the relationship on the bottom is called, I'm sorry, it's subcontrary sub contrary and the rule for sub contraries is that both may be true both cannot be false again you can find these rules on the what is a judgment handout or what are judgments handout then one more relationship and that's the uh, e and o and a and i the universal in particular so this is called the sub alternate I'm just going to put sub alt for now so I can fit it all. And the rule again for sub alternate is that if the universal is true, then the particular is also true. But what we can't do is go from a particular to a universal. That is always going to be a mistake. Okay? So if the universal is true, the particular is true, but not the reverse. <clears throat> All right, so that's some reviewing. Now it looks very messy on my screen, so I'm going to take this off. Let's clean it off a little, and what we're gonna do is make a nice new square, and we're gonna do with the apples again. Just as some review, let's do a new square. I would encourage you to do this in your notes, and we're gonna have all apples are red here, no, apples are red here some apples are red 
here. Some apples are not red here. Okay. Now, given the rules, let's pretend uh, you go to the grocery store and you find that it's true. Some apples are not red. If this is true, what becomes of the contradiction? Is it true or is it false? Given the rules, well, we know that they both can't be true and they both can't be false. So if this is true, the contradiction is false. All right, so we could remove that question mark. And we also know if this is false, then this other one about no apples are red, that may also be false and it may also be true. Um, we can't read up the square, so that would be a mistake. So what are we going to do? And we don't know about whether some apples are red from this. We don't know. So at this point, given where we started, these corners are going to be called doubtful. D is for doubtful. Okay. Given where we started, we don't know what those other corners are, the truth value of them. Now, let's start somewhere else, given the rules. Let's do a different corner. Let's start, let's start, let me take that off too. <clears throat> let's say I come to class and I'm making this bold claim. Hey, students, all apples are red. I think that's true. And students come and show me a non-red apple. They bring me a Granny Smith and it's green. And so I'm saying this is true and they are saying this is false. Now, given where we started and the rules of the square, we can figure out the rest of it. If this is true, all apples are red, then the contrary is false. Why? Because both cannot be true. And just think about it. If all the apples in the world are red is true, then uh, no apples are red can also be true. Those are contradictions too. So <clears throat> all apples are red is true. Pretend then this is false. No apples are red. And if no apples are red or false, what happens to the contradiction? That is also true. So now we have uh, the square looking a little bit different in terms of truth value because of where we started. We started with the universal affirmative. Now let's try one more iteration of this. Um, let's try, um, no apples are red. Let's say that's true. Pretend that's true. There's no red apples. They're all, all the green ones and yellow ones have, I don't know, been harmed in some blight. And now we only have, uh, red ones. So <clears throat> no, we have, um, I'm sorry, there are no red apples, not non-red. Okay, so pretend that's true. What happens to the contradiction over here? That's false. So if no apples are red is true, then some apples are red would be false, okay? And if no apples are red is true, then all apples are red would also be false, given the rules and given the meaning of the statement. And if all apples are red is false, then the contradiction uh, some apples are not red would be true. So now look, we have the square looking a little bit different in terms of truth value. All right, now what are we going to do with this? We are going to uh, stop using apples and we're going to start using uh, real statements. So let me get things back to uh, some order here. And uh, I've got some handouts lined up for us to look at. I want to show them to you because we're going to be using these handouts. Um, this is a handout called Obversion, Conversion, Contraposition, and Eduction. And it's basically a list of rules for how to manipulate a statement to obvert it or convert it to get it to fit on the square. Eduction is uh, how we're going to read the truth value of the statement once it's on the square. Now there's another handout. Mm, let me get rid of that. There's another handout I have here with a lot of examples, uh, a lot of sentences. This comes from the Raymond McCall book that I've been showing you. 
and it's an exercise I copied out of the back. And uh, McCall's book starts going over this on page 88 and 89, if you have that book. If you're using Peter Kreft and the Socratic logic, this book starts, ooh, where am I going here? This book starts going over changing propositions on page 166. And you can also go on YouTube and Google um, or on, on the internet and go on Google and, and look up obversion, conversion, eduction. This is logic. This is standard stuff. So um, there are other resources you can use, but we're going to use these exercises for now. So let's, uh, let's just look at what we're, what we're doing here. Um, now look at number 70. It says, granted the truth of the first proposition in each of this series, designate the succeeding propositions, propositions as consequently true, false, or doubtful. So he's telling us, pretend A, or, or pretend number one, the A statement, every neurotic is inhibited is true. Pretend that's true. What happens to all these other statements? And remember the exercise we did just previously. We have to identify whether these are A, E, I, or O statements before we can fit them on the square. So I have one more little handout. Um, it's actually not a very good one. I had to, uh, it's a photo, so I'm sorry if it doesn't look that great. Um, I had to take a picture of this. I uh, made this on the fly in class one semester and just took a picture of it and didn't get to save the actual file. But what I have here is a sort of um, flow chart. It's a flow chart for how to take a statement like one of these, every neurotic is inhibited, make two squares and put all the related statements on the square and judge whether it's true, false, or doubtful. So I'm going to pause here, and when we come back, we're going to do some of these. What we'll do is make two squares, and I'll show you how to use this flow chart in order to uh, fit the statements onto the square. And I'll also show you uh, a real live logic problem that I had to uh, address using this. So um, you might think, why, why do I have to do this? I, I'll never do this in my entire life. Actually, you might, and I have. So when we come back, it's going to be uh, digging in and using the square of opposition. All right.